Australia is highly connected. And so I'd say our Australian Bureau of Statistics indicate that the vast majority of Australian households have an internet connection. I would say somewhere in excess of 80%. Even remote towns now have access at local kiosks or libraries. And so everyone has access. And access is not just uh, via some broadband connectivity, but also wireless. And so when I compare as a modern or more developed nation, Australia with, say, Canada, the US and the UK, we've actually got as much social media addiction as any of those other nations. I would say, very interestingly, in newly industrialized countries like India and China, you have an even greater problem whereby people who have not been connected in the past all of a sudden not only have connectivity via a smartphone but have all these applications. They feel like little kids in a, in a candy store. So I've gone from nothing to having everything. Look what I can do. This is incredible. And I'm not sold on the idea that IT in developing nations helps them come up to become a more developed country and places them more on par with the United States and United Kingdom. I think that is the most damaging thing that can happen when you take a developing nation, throw IT at it as a solution to starvation and waterborne disease and go, problem fixed, we're done. We've just gone and delivered about 50,000 computers to the local center there. Everyone's going to get online and everyone's going to have eBay stores and they're all going to make social entrepreneurial decisions for themselves and look, startup companies everywhere. No. What happens is the problem's rerouted from starving to social media addiction. It, it's rerouted from when I first started out in um, telecommunications as an engineer, I was building uh, networks for developing nations like the Philippines and India. And we used to count pay phones per village in 1996. There were places in India that didn't have a public pay phone. And we thought, look at, look at what we're doing. We're putting in public pay phones so that people can actually talk to others in different state circles in the same country. They had nothing in rural areas. And we've gone from that and a similar uh, environment in the Philippines to where now we have Filipinos texting one another across the table, texting one another while they're sitting next to each other. We've got Indians just constantly on social media. That's not productive. That's not helpful. Because in the end, we're still humans. We still need to face each other. We still need to say, deal has been won, or I'm going to deliver this for you. And so I think we're almost remapping re, re the problem that we have. We're shifting it. It's shifting. So instead of starvation, we're now worrying about addiction. Zuckerberg on the front cover of Time magazine saying, look, we've got this great idea, or Google having those balloons in the air saying, we don't need to have you know, satellites and we don't need to have this and that and we can offer free internet access via balloons hovering above, that's not going to solve literacy issues. That's just going to amplify them. Because the first things humans do in either a communist state that's breaking out of communism or a developing state that's breaking out of a lesser developed nation is they don't go to literacy, they go to pornography or they go to some other gaming evil, or they go to something else. It has nothing to do with education. In fact, gambling, pornography, and any other addiction, alcoholism, can be spurred on by more connectivity to the internet. Because I might fall onto another community that sells drugs easier than I would have if I was staying at home until nighttime and then going to school the next day. And then I'm exploring on the internet. The internet has no bounds. The internet has a global reach. I can find the information that I want faster. And so I don't think IT or social media is an answer to the world's humanitarian issues. I think it amplifies crises with new issues that were never there in the first place. And so we, when we look at war-torn areas, when soldiers have gone in and they've had to fight on the ground from developed nations, they take all the social problems they've had in the developed nations and place them in a context that is foreign. 
And so a Muslim country that never had issues with A, B, C, and D, all of a sudden has issues with A, B, and C, and D because soldiers have brought them from their own modern developed nation. Whether it's put drugs in front of somebody or pornography or a game engine, whatever it is, it's distraction. It's taking them away from what purpose they have. It's to live. It's to live free. It's to have choice. It's not to be controlled. It's not to be surveilled. It's privacy. It's security of state, security of welfare, security of my household.